Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant, welcome back to the channel. Last week, EA dropped a difficult but fun objective that I think was meant to bring some sort of variety to an already very sweaty part of this game, Foot Champions. And here we are with another similar objective this week, however, this one nobody wants to do. But yet, prices of some of those players required are going up on the market, so some people want to. We'll talk about that big objective that dropped yesterday and look forward to today on Thursday. We have Make Your Mark 2 cards coming tomorrow and maybe more reason to have those Argentinian cards in a team coming today as well for a cup. So we'll look at that and what else to expect today on a Thursday. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Let's start by looking at yesterday's content, which brought us more of the guaranteed packs. Now, I have not been on this game very much at all. I was away basically all day yesterday. This is my first time seeing the MYM, Make Your Mark, Team 1 Guaranteed Upgrade Pack. I love that it's one squad. I saw the price of this SBC right away and knew that it was going to be a banger because it's an 85 rated squad with one team of the week or team of the season. It's a 60,000 coin SBC. We are never going to say no to a cheap guaranteed promo card pack, especially when it's a pack that is going to give us live cards that are upgrading right now for Euros and for Copa America, which finally starts today. We have both competitions running in full steam starting today on Thursday. It's very, very exciting. The weight can't be amazing on this, guys, right? Let's be honest, right? Sure, there's a lot of fodder cards that are inside of both these Copa and Euro Make Your Mark teams, but it's definitely worth a shot. I mean, there's not too much else to say except get this one done, do it, craft it, 81 plus pick to it type of situation. It is making that low rated fodder move even higher. Guys, 83s are finally not discarded anymore. They're 1.1k. 84s are like just almost 3,000 coins, 2.7. I wonder if these actually hit 3,000 coins yesterday. This Caroline Weir right now shows us 2.9. They've just been slowly rising. They were 2.3K yesterday when we were recording the video, and then they went to 3,000 coins. They're up big time in 85s. Remember we talked about 80, buying 85s at 4K? That was a big W if you did, because these cards yesterday went from 4.6 all the way to 6,000 coins. Now, we do have Rivals Rewards today, which is going to create a really good trading opportunity with these cards, guys. Fodder on the low tier. That mean, all the SPCs that we've had, the guaranteed packs, uh, both of the last two days with the 92 plus, and then the Make Your Mark Team 1 guaranteed. If you're trying to make any coins at all, or if you just want something to do on the game today, during Division Rivals Rewards, the tradable rewards especially are going to be opened. They're not as crazy as they used to be. But people will be packing those 83s, 4s, 5s, and 6s a lot. And it would be a great time to get on bids for those because they're going to go up again as the daily SBCs refresh around the content drop. Um, it would be like a short one-day hold type of flip scenario. You wouldn't want to hold them probably into Friday. But I would say that these cards, 83s to 85s, would be amazing to be trading with today on this game with Division Rivals. So that's kind of like a low budget method if you're trying to make some coins right now, get those coins up for whatever it may be. That would be something to do on the game today. So there was that SBC as well as a Tim Weah. We were looking at his leak. We were talking about it. Hey, maybe he was going to come. He finally dropped. Guys, this, is, uh, this SBC is actually getting a good amount of hype, to be honest. Obviously, as a man from the USA, I'm very excited for this Tim Weah. I will be doing the SBC. I was working on an Evolution version of him, and the Evo version's close to this, but this one's definitely better. Four-star, five-star, high, high work rates. He's got whipped pass, quick step, and intercept with 97 pace and only physical at 87 below the 90 rated threshold. A very, very good card. 80 aggression's a little bit low. I just noticed that. That's a little bit low, but he can play on the right or left side in the defense, right or left back. He can also play right mid or right wing, which is more so of where he plays in real life. So he's going to upgrade for getting goals or assists, which actually, as I watched the USMNT a good amount, if you want to do this card for the UVA links, for a USA squad, or just for the potential upgrades, I think there's actually a pretty good chance that he would get two upgrades, right? He's going to start, he's going to play every single game for the USMNT, and there's a decent chance that he gets goals or assists. He did score and assist, I think, or at least scored in the World Cup. So, there's a great shot, great opportunity for him to get on the score sheet. So this is a good SPC, to be honest. 119,000 coins. Seems like a lot of people like it, too. Uh, the playstyles on the rest of the card, uh, apart from his playstyle pluses, yeah, he's got power shot. 
Uh, Tiki Taka pinged past. He's got Rapid. He's going to be very fast. He's got Relentless as well. Trickster and Flare. So not bad. I kind of wish he maybe had one or two more defending playstyles if you're going to use him as a right back. Um, but that it's a really solid card. He's very fast in real life. His dribbling is good. If he had technical, this card would be really broken. But I have nothing bad to say about that Tim Weah. Super excited about it. And there's a good chance that he gets at least two upgrades. One guaranteed. Two would be hopeful. Now, we also had the 81 plus team of the week that refreshed or kind of re upped yesterday. Do this SBC, all right? When you get enough 84s and 5s to get this done, it doesn't have to be right away, but this is, in, this is a free SBC through crafting that will literally give you 35,000 coins. So if you're not not having that many coins in this game right now, trade with the fodder, like I mentioned, and then with some of the fodder you get from, you know, grinding the daily gold upgrades, getting your exchanges done, and then doing uh, the 81 plus player picks and crafting, do this 81 plus tradable because all team elite cards are still above 30,000 coins, and that is easy money right there. Just wanted to mention that because team leaks are still expensive. Now, this is the big news, and this is what's got people a little bit up in arms because last week with the Enzo Fernandez, People were excited about that, right? It was not the most exciting because it was a little sweaty and a lot of people were upset because they thought Enzo Fernandez was going to actually be an SBC. So our expectations were let down there. Well, we have yet again another champs objective, a one nation requirement. It is Argentina. So they give us an Argentinian card as a reward and then they allow us to use or tell us to use the all Argentinian squads in this weekend league to get the extra rewards. And it's the reward that is the problem. Nuno Menge, only three playstyle pluses. The card looks good. And a lot of people like his team in the season card, guys. A lot of people really like Nuno Menge Tots. I used him a decent amount, or not a decent amount. I used him for a couple of games, I think, during League One Tots when he was out linking him to Mbappe, and he was good. He was very good. He's always good in this game, but I think the lack of the fourth playstyle plus on this card, obviously he's a make your mark card, so he can't get a fourth playstyle plus, and the fact that his his stat boost over his team this season isn't that big, and who wants to play 12 games and try to sweat out with an Argentinian side that's going to be less than meta and less than desirable than probably all of our main teams for this card just doesn't quite seem worth it, right? Especially when you look at some of the defenders in Argentinian teams, it's rough. It is very rough. It's going to be more difficult to field a competitive team with the Argentinians than it is in this game with the English squads. And you only get one player. It's not like they give us, even like if they gave us for play six matches, like a Tots Pepe, or if they gave us, I don't know, um, you know, Ruben Diaz would probably be too much, but some other sort of Portuguese, sorry, not even Portuguese. Why did I say Ruben Diaz? It would have to be Argentinian, right? It's not like they're giving us uh, Argentinian rewards inside of this as well that we could like use and upgrade our teams. If they were doing that, that would be sick. Um, but they don't. And it's only Nuno Menge. I really think this is something that very few people are going to to do just because it's very difficult. I Again, I still like the idea behind this. I think it's cool, but I think the execution this week is like a three out of 10. However, the prices on the market for these Argentine cards are of course going up because there are people that are going and doing this. Now for the defenders, like we mentioned, like for this Cuti Romero, I think we even talked about it earlier in the week that if they were gonna do an Argentine objective, it was gonna make some of these cards go bananas. And Cuti Romero has gone from 400,000 coins, 410K, 440,000 coins. He is max price at 600,000 coins. I think goalkeepers are tough to come by too, but even some of these other cards like Garnacho Moments yesterday went from 90K up to 130. Here's kind of the difference between last week with the English cards and this week with the Argentines. These cards this week shot up in price and then people were like, oh, well, uh, this objective kind of sucks. I really don't want to buy these cards. So look, Garnacho went from 90K up to 130 and now he's, he kind of just fell right back down to 90 to 100,000 coin range because there's not actually that much pure demand for this objective and as many people buying these cards. Same thing with Messi. Messi went from 270K, he spiked 100,000 coins and then went boop, straight back down to 260K because how many people are actually gonna go buy an Inform Messi and use it right now in this game for this objective? 
when the rewards just aren't worth it. However, there will be potentially another reason to have Argentinian cards in your team, and that could make some of the prices go a little bit higher. So we'll talk about that later. But if you have any Argentines, like some of the icons, some of the defenders especially, um, are up a lot in price. And a lot of people are saying, oh, Nate, well, if you really wanted to go for it and have some fun and grind, you know, then you could go get this card. Sure, you absolutely can. There's a Zanetti SBC that is available to get either one of his foot birthday options, one with the skills, one with the weak foot. If that is something that motivates you to grind, Using an Argentine team, if yours looks halfway decent, you have some defenders in there, you have the good attackers like Garnacho, because there are plenty of great Argentines in this game. I'm just zeroing in on the defenders because there's really not that many good ones. Let's be completely honest. But if you've got a great team and you're going to just try to tough it out and go for it, by all means, do it. I'm just saying it is not on par with the Enzo objective that dropped last week. But again, we're going to keep an eye on those Argentine prices here today on this game. Now let's talk about the daily upgrades right from the Euros matches. I can't wait for tomorrow for Copa America to be included in this finally after their first match. But yesterday's upgrades were honestly interesting. There was a little bit more disappointment for some of the cards than there really was success. Only three cards getting upgraded yesterday. Dalglish becoming the first 98 rated card in this game with his plus one. That card looks, I mean, unbelievable. Soup Care getting a plus one as well for Croatia scoring two goals. And Sosa saw the pitch, so he is getting a chemistry boost. And that was it. This is the tweet that EA put out. Um, keeping the standard, they call it, right? They're keeping the standard. Their upgrades coming in pretty fast. I'm really curious to see tonight on Thursday when the upgrades come through because we do have Argentina playing versus Canada, right? Argentina versus Canada in that first Copa America game. I'm really curious to see if they upgrade the Euro cards while that game is going on because the time the Argentina game starts is when the cards from the Euros have been getting upgraded every single day. Really, really curious to see what they do with that. But that dog leash looks crazy. The bigger stories from yesterday are some of the players from the nations that even played good and got victories like they should have achieved uh, price is going down on some of those cards. Full crook, right? This is where we start to get for some of these PTG cards. You get to prices that are just too good to be true, I think. And it's good to see some of these things just to kind of keep us in check, right? This full crook card yesterday during the Germany game and even before the Germany game was 250,000 coins, right? He had gone up a ton. Remember, this card just a couple of weeks ago was literally 40 to 50 K, right? And sure, he's got a lot of hype. He got the first upgrade. It's a GG. And Germany did exactly what they were expected to yesterday. But that's kind of why his price rent went down. He was very, very invested in. He's probably more than what his price actually should be. Now, he went from his low point, though, after the game. Guys, what do we say every single night on these videos? buying after the games, watching the prices go down and kind of buying in that panic sell or that post game sell off. That's when you can get some good prices. He was all the way at 190,000 coins and he is now back up to like just over 200. He's still going to fluctuate. There's still a lot of people that are selling this card. So a lot of people making coins, some people probably losing, but Germany are now one win away from him becoming a four play style plus player. Like if they win one more game in that third round of the group stages, He's getting that big upgrade and getting the fourth place stop plus. And that's probably from now up until then, his price is going to start creeping up again because people are going to be expecting that, right? So that is one thing. The cards that succeed, even if their price drops off after a game, if there's still upgrades that are close, like even closer now for full crook to get that next play style plus, he still looks like a decent investment to me. He just dropped off a lot because a lot of people invested and nothing crazy happened during the game. It's just kind of... It went to planned, and that's boring enough to make the card drop down post game. Again, he was a low price card. He got supplied a lot too. So this was actually a pretty good investment, I think, under 200K because he could end up being 240, 250 again by the time Germany play in their third and final match, which could be, of course, the third win for the fourth place stop plus. So the other side of the coin is Croatia. What a day of games yesterday too with this Croatia-Albania game. But with that result, this Gavardiol card tanked, right? Because it ain't looking good, Brev. 
for them right now. 389k for Gavardiol. He went down 200,000 coins. He went to 170k. But look at bro's price right now. Back to 227. He started to go back up because people think, okay, yes, it is still possible that Croatia get out of the group. I think mathematically, it is still possible that they get out of the group. And, you know, he could still get upgrades if Croatia kind of turn it around. He could at least get one. He hasn't gotten any yet. So, um, at least I don't think he has. That's a card that a lot of people invested in just because he dropped off too much. Again, the post-game panic sell, a couple hours after the game, that's always the best time to be watching these cards. But those are the two that I wanted to point out from yesterday, Fulkrug and Gavardiol. So if you bought and timed that right, GG's. But there's big upgrades on the line today. And again, after looking at those graphs, what can you say? Selling in the hype is always the best policy, especially for the PTG cards that are now just disgracefully expensive. Um, some of them, pro oh my gosh, how much is Sokka? Excuse me? Sokka is 3.5 million coins. Sure, that card looks absolutely nutty, but kind of the same thing as Fulcrug. Different because he's a way more expensive card, but similar in that England are expected to win today. And what's going to happen when they win? He's probably going to stay the same or maybe go down a little bit in price. It's not like anything that Saka does today is going to help him get an upgrade besides them winning, which is what is expected. So just be careful with some of those cards. Of course, we do have some big time games coming today. Um, let's just look at those right now. Might as well. We've got Slovenia versus Serbia. Really hoping for Serbia to hit the back of the net multiple times. My Vidic needs upgrades. That's my personal standpoint there. Um, maybe some of you guys agree with me there. You want Serbia to win because you've got Vlahovic. I'm sure just about everybody has an O block that they wouldn't mind also if Slovenia won because bro would go to a 97. And even Sesko, maybe you're rooting for him. I've heard this uh, card is pretty good in game two. So that's a nice game. Could be pretty um, interesting. You've also got England versus Denmark. Again, kind of touched on that one. I'm invested in Kyle Walker. But again, I will be selling in the hype today. I would expect this price to rise up into the start of the game. And I will get out of there so I can take my profit and not have to worry about it. And then, again, another big game late today, Spain versus Italy. Now, I'm a little bit invested here because I have a couple of Nico Williams. He's five, ooh, 533, actually. Hold on a second. That's up like 80K from where I was able to buy him at. If he's actually, if he's that price, um, I'm going to get tempted to sell on the height because that would be some pretty good money now if he um scores oh yeah 530k sick oh we love that if he were to score or assist today then his price is going to go up a lot for the make your mark cards you guys know for these it's all about the goals and the assist and the starts and stuff like that so especially for nico williams also for Le Normand. Le Normand already has a clean sheet, guys. So let's say Spain come out and win 2-0 today and they keep a clean sheet against Italy, which would be difficult, but, you know, it could happen. This Le Normand would be the first card of any Make Your Mark to actually get a upgrade stats and not just upgrade on chemistry. Um, DeMarco is an interesting one. He needs goals or assists because he's technically a midfielder, even though he's like in game and in real life usually a defender but those are some big big games today again sell on the hype and watch the card prices after the game if there are drops it could bring opportunities to buy let's talk about what else is coming today on thursday content wise because thursdays as we already alluded to and mentioned uh bring another opportunity to play with club not even club nation specific teams and that is with the cups the one nation frenzy cup it was england last week right remember we had the england weekend league objective and then the next day on thursday they dropped the cup also english so if they dropped an argentinian objective yesterday right for the nuno menge play with the argentines well then guess what we're kind of thinking might be coming today in argentinian cup which is why i mentioned earlier in the video especially for the 93 rated and below Argentinian cards, which is most of these, right? Because the cup is 93 rated maximum. Keep a close eye on some of these. Like, um, let's see, this Tevez is 410K. He went from 385 all the way to 460. If he were to go back down to the, the high 300s, I would be interested in buying that today. Maybe the Garnacho team of the season could be another card you keep an eye on. Maybe this Mascherano. Uh, just kidding. He's max price, so don't uh, don't buy him. Maybe the Messi, though. And some of these other cards that are kind of cheaper, lower-rated beasts, you may um, say. These could be cards to actually watch because there might be people buying them for the cup today. How about this McAllister? 
He's got a max price of 104. He went from 60K up to 97. You know, like if this card is like 77K, I would have bought that maybe because that will be a card that would probably have some hype if there is a cup that is dropped today and maybe some of the messy specials as well just because people are going to want to use those. And I think a cup will interest a lot more people because it's XP, right? A lot of us have been asking, when is EA going to drop more XP? And kind of Thursdays have been XP days because they drop these every single week, which is a couple thousand XP getting the games done. I need to get the England ones done for the XP myself, only at level 14. And I'm really trying to chase level 21. A lot of people are ahead of me in this, trying to get to level 21 and get Balogun. Really excited to try him out, especially with the way of the draft yesterday. I'm sure some of you guys are going to be hitting level 22 today, maybe even getting close to level 25 where Klaus is. Um, I don't know, maybe drop in the comments down below what level you are, but I have a feeling a lot of you guys are like 21, 22. If you've gotten like all the XP from the season so far, I think that's kind of like the tippity top range of where you could be at right now. Obviously, I'm a little bit behind that, but I'm pretty happy with my progress. And if you're feeling behind, do not worry. EA, of course, will go crazy on the XP towards the end of the season, which there's plenty of time left in the season. Now, Thursday content today in terms of the SBCs, maybe we have one last player SBC. I would maybe expect us to have that. Although I think last week on Thursday was really, really quiet. If I'm remembering correctly, I don't know who we had, but I think it was pretty quiet, especially since they dropped two SBCs yesterday on Tuesday with Posh and Vandevin. I could actually see today be an SBC less day unless they want to drop an end of an era which was teased. And we do have Hasebe, which I just noticed Hasebe and Lamer are both expiring and he's an end of an era. So are EA replacing Hasebe with another end of an era card today? If there's leaks, keep an eye out for it. There's been nothing besides this tweet saying end of an era soon. I don't exactly know who that could be. There's a lot of options of players who have been retiring or announcing that their either club days are over or they're just retiring in general. Still plenty of options for that. So watch out for leaks because some people think that could be a big end of an era card and it could be a very popular player, which would mean a lot of hype. So that could be a player SBC today or maybe even sometime during the weekend. Uh, guys, again, we already mentioned the rivals. Today's going to be a big gameplay day for the cup and also for uh, people that are going to be playing division rivals and qualifying for foot champs to get ahead of the game. This is my Argentine team, by the way, as I set it up. It's not looking good here either. I mean, I do have some nice attackers, the Garnacho, the um, Paltaro, right? Di Maria, this Ragoni card that I have used so much in the early stages of the game. Lovely Evo there for him, but the rest of my team not looking that great. So, I mean, we can rock in the cup like this though, because we're 88 rated here. So we should be have uh, some fun time in the cup. If we do get that Argentine cup today, um, it would be a decent day to grind that gameplay out and get ahead of schedule per se. Um, again, sell PTGs and make your mark cards into the hype. And we do have really quickly to end off the video, a few more leaks for make your mark team number two, Hoyland. Speaking of Danish players, right? Denmark plays today. Hoyland is coming as a make your mark player. I, you know what? I have not caught a lot of the Denmark games. I guess I'll have to see today if Hoyland plays. I think he started in the last one and maybe he might even have scored already. Um, if he has, that would actually be really, really uh, a W for his card. You mean he could upgrade very, very quickly if he's already got a goal to his tally and uh, has the appearance for, of course, the chemistry. Jonathan David is coming as a Canadian card for Make Your Mark in Team 2. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? There was a few more leaks. I'm just scrolling through really quick right here on this page for some of the guys that were leaked. Danny Cordova-Hall is coming as a Spanish Make Your Mark card. So I know we have the Nico Williams. Cordova-Hall is coming as well. Uh, De Ketelera for a Belgium. It looks like we're getting De Ketelera and Doku, right, for the next set of the Make Your Mark cards. That could be interesting. I think there's one more leak, Stanisic. I think those are all the leaks as of right now, just scrolling through everything player-wise there. Yeah, that is all the leaks as of right now. And tomorrow's a big day for Make Your Mark Team too. We hope that they change some things around. But today also for the Make Your Mark cards could be a decent day to invest a little bit if you want to try to time it on some of these cards. It all depends on who's coming out, of course, in the next team, if it's going to be hype or not. Uh, but we've already seen some of the elite French players, right? So as a French attacker, this Cold Omani especially with Mbappe out with that broken nose injury, 599K for Cold Omani. Like that's that's a price that I just saw right there. That's pretty cheap. Let's take a look at his graph. 596, 
wow, he was 537. That was <laughs> that was probably the time to buy. But like that's the type of card that could rise up a little bit, even though he only has three play style pluses. That's the type of card that could rise up a little bit as these guys near their end of their stay in packs. Same thing with the Copa cards. You know what? I feel like these are kind of, you know, not on people's radars as much. Of course, the McKenny card went up a bunch, but maybe it's um, Jan Cotto or maybe it is um, the Gabriel Martinelli card. Some of these could be going up. Even Ugarte with the PSG links linking to Scriniar. A lot of people did Barcola as well. Some of these could see some appreciation and value, of course, too, over the next couple of days. So if you want to try to get some investments in, I think you've got a little bit of time to do that today, but not that much. And then again, this is the current state of the account. I didn't trade with anything yesterday. I still have the Nico Williams that I bought for 460,000 coins. The McKenny I bought at 147. And the Scriniar that I got at 85. We're going to keep holding on to that and hope that he goes goes wait how much is he oh we're cooking 108 110 nice that's a really good rise there for him so hopefully some more nice rises today on the market but there's definitely going to be a lot of euros action so watch those games today because that's going to make the market do some of this i will see you guys in a twitch stream today the link's down below in the description and i'll catch you guys in another video tomorrow if you enjoyed this one though drop a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new see you guys in another video tomorrow it's been nate the video and catch you guys there peace out